I know I'm the Irish guy, and everyone was laughing at you last summer. I mean, don't worry, people laugh at me every day. Mainly when I'm in Asda trying to buy toilet paper with so many 5p coins, I break the self service machine. But as today, I'm going to go through every property club. And remember that one player you sold last summer that everyone said you were stupid for selling? The one sale that would majorly backfire on you. Well, it's about one length of a pregnancy later, so I'm just going to grade each player based on how well they're actually doing elsewhere. Let's see if you were actually wrong to sell. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Fuller and Balogun, 3 out of 10. Go back a year ago, and Arsenal fans were all obsessed with Fuller and Balogun. A USA international striker would explode it with 22 goals for Reims in France last season. Speak to most gunners on the streets, and they would probably tell you they'd have happily thrown Eddie and Kedia into the fattest shark tank they could find whilst giving Balogun in the Henri 14 shirt. He was the truth, the future of this Arsenal team. Ah, uh, really? Yeah, scoring loads of goals in France is cool. Are we just gonna ignore the fact that over there, in the land where eating chocolate croissants for dinner is normal, that Alexander Lacazette ended last season on 31 goals for Lyon. The bloated teddy bear who Arsenal fans thought was now about as tasty as a muffin filled with worms. Some Arsenal fans thought that selling Balogun to Monaco last summer was a mistake. Well, how good is he really? Now that he's at the spiritual home of both Henri and Mbappe, we can finally see how good this American striker actually is. Guess what? Six goals. He's only scored one league goal since November. And the crucial chunk of embarrassing information is that he's finally been stripped of penalty duty after missing four. Four spot kicks for Monaco. How would he miss four penalties in one season? Honestly, Arsenal fans, relax. You ain't missing much. Aston Villa, Cameron Archer, 6 out of 10. Look, it seemed like a bit of a cruel shock when Aston Villa decided to cash in on their England under 21 international striker Cameron Archer last summer. Honestly, he'd been at this club since he was a child? He was finally finding his feet on loan at Middlesbrough last season. Surely he was going to be given a chunk of minutes for Villa in the Europa Conference League this season? Um, no partially sold to Sheffield United for just £18 million. Pounds. It felt a bit like when Liverpool gave the Blades Ree and Brewster four years ago, just as he was starting to crawl into the first team picture. It was harsh. Archer has been better than Brewster, but then again, that's not hard. A three-legged mouse would probably be more of a goal threat than Brewster has been. Archer's been a live wire nuisance up front, surviving off scraps in a terrible team. He's banged in 40 goals, considering he's played for one of the worst public teams of all time. I don't think that's too garbage. He even scored his first Premier League goal at Villa Park, something Unai Emery tried to deprive him of. But still, he's been good. But not great. Bournemouth, Jane and Anthony, 4.5 out of 10. I don't think Bournemouth were really laughed at at all for selling anyone last summer. The only one that maybe raised an eyebrow was probably loaning out their ex Arsenal winger Jane and Anthony to Leeds. After he looked like a bright spark under Gary O'Neill last season, that was a little strange, I guess. But lads, I know he came through the same Gunners Academy team as Reese Nelson and Emil Smith Rowe. But I don't care if all three of them do go out for ice cream every Thursday night. He is still nowhere near as good as them. He's on loan at Ellen Road and is just a bit par player with the end product of a frozen steak. Ryan out Leeds are in a great place, but that's partly due to the fact that he mostly is just fantasizing about pancakes on the bench. This is his big chance to light up the championship, and um, he scored once. That's incredibly average. Brentford, David Raya, 8 out of 10. Look, there weren't too many Brentford sales last summer. I don't even think Brentford fans were really beating the head off the computer when David Raya was sold. His departure was inevitable. It was obvious. The only way the Spanish international was going to stay with the bees when he had both Chelsea and Arsenal after him was if the club had threatened to burn his passport in a toilet. Well, listen, how good is Raya being for Arsenal? Quietly, very good. I know it's not a popular thing to acknowledge because the English media want him to fail and appear similarly to their golden boy Aaron Ramsdale, but aside from one or two mistakes early doors, he has been pretty excellent. And don't forget, against FC Porto last week, he became the first Arsenal goalkeeper to come out victorious in the Champions League penalty shootout since Manuel Almunia against Roma 15 years ago. Spookly, almost 15 years to the day. Brighton, Alexis McAllister 8 out of 10. I don't think anybody was really on Brighton's backs when they cashed in on Moise Asito for over 100 million beans. I I think we all knew that was financial brilliance from the Seagulls. People try to gas up Sacido as being the next Angola Kante. Really? Because his performances for Chelsea this season just make him look like an Equatorian long staff. Selling Alexis McAllister to Liverpool for just £40 million six months after winning the World Cup, that seemed a little strange. And you know what? He's been good. Nothing spectacular, although he has had some highlight reel goals and assists. But considering that he's helped revamp a previously stale right midfield, largely playing out of position as a defensive midfielder, then you know what, lads? He's actually been very good. Burnley, nobody. To be fair to Vincent Company, nobody laughed at any player that Burnley sold last summer because 
he managed to keep all of his important first teamers on board. He only actually cashed in on one. Two million pounds paid from Coventry for Bobby Thomas. A 23-year-old centre-back who hadn't even yet made his Burnley League debut. Do you think there were any tears when he left Turf Moor? No, um, half the Burnley fan base probably don't even realise that he's gone. Chelsea makes him out two at a ten. Chelsea sold a lot of players last summer. But I think the only real sale that was a joke was when they let Mason Mount go to Manchester United for £55 million. To me, letting a wildly successful academy footballer, someone who had recently helped you win a Champions League, letting him join one of your most hated rivals before he'd even turned 25. To me, that must have left a sick taste of baboon poo in every Chelsea fan's mouth. I thought he would absolutely light up the Manchester United midfield. No. He's been a disaster. It's nearly April and he's played less than 700 minutes of football. It's been the most injury plagued year of his life. I don't even know what's wrong. What did he do to his calf over Christmas? Did he get into a fight with his mom over the turkey? And so she decided to ram the butter knife in his leg? I don't understand, but yeah. He really has been absolutely barely seen on the pitch so far. So yeah, a giant waste of time. Crystal Palace Woodward's has 7 out of 10. To be fair, nobody thought Crystal Palace were stupid for setting anybody this season because they didn't sell anyone this season. All the players that left went on a free. Palace didn't have a choice. What more could they do? They offered Wilfred Zaha a contract worth £200,000 a week when he's already in his 30s. It was almost bordering on desperate. But if anybody cares, he's doing okay in Turkey. 10 goals and 5 assists in 37 games for Galatasaray so far. Although, after a very promising Champions League group stage where they finished above Manchester United to then limply go out in the Europa League against Sparta Prague. A team who would then concede 11 goals against Liverpool in the next round. Oh, Gala. Oh, Zaha. What a waste. Everton, Damari Gray, 5 out of 10. I thought it was weird when Damari Gray quit Everton last summer. He severely annoyed Sean Dyche by essentially downing tools and telling the world that he was off to drink pints of money in the Saudi desert being coached by Stevie G. But yeah, as one of Everton's only few attacking bright sparks over the last couple of your dreary years, it was a bit strange to see him sold at the age of 27 to add that idiot back for just eight million pounds. It's funny, this guy once chose to use Bayer Leverkusen as a six month stepping stone to get him noticed by Everton. Yeah, and I bet he wishes he stayed in Germany now. Would he rather be coached by Xabi Alonso or Steven Gerrard? Two world-class Liverpool midfield machines, but one is a tactical genius while the other Clearly has the tactical knowledge of mushroom pie. Anyway, he's having an average season, four goals and four assists. But I don't think he cares. He's earning at least 100k a week. Fulham Alexander Mitrovic, 9.5 out of 10. Oh, wow. Alexander Mitrovic. Look, I know it would have been stupid for Fulham to turn down a 50 million pound bid for a one way striker who would soon be turning 30. But still, it was a little weird to see Fulham selling their absolute talisman and goal machine, Alexander Mitrovic. This entire Fulham team was built around him. He was suspended at the end of last season. And some Fulham fans reacted to the news as if they'd just been told that their mum with dementia was now climbing skyscrapers in London thinking she was Spider-Man. But Fulham fans and even to panicked because they've been fine. But still, Mitro has been unreal. Some players, when they sign a mega money deal in Saudi, their hunger, drive and work rate falls off a cliff. Not Mitrovic. Right now, judging by the stats, apparently he's now twice the striker that Karim Benzema is. I mean, Benzema is someone who looks like he's just stopped trying. Just 12 goals in 23 games for Al-Etihad so far, while Mitrovic, 31 goals in 35 games for al Alal. He recently went on a Jamie Vardy-esque 11-game goal-scoring streak. He's been immense. He's a Saudi Pro League superstar. Liverpool, Jordan Henderson, 1 out of 10. Okay, again, I don't really think anybody thought Liverpool were that stupid to sell anyone last summer. But maybe, maybe it was a little strange and uncomfortable to see them part so easily with their captain Jordan Henderson scuttling off to al Fak for £700,000 a week. Arguably, the worst personal transfer decision in Premier League history from the player's perspective, not Liverpool. A Champions League Premier League winning captain scuttling on the back door without even a goodbye. He was clearly average pig muck for a horrible team playing in front of less people than it would normally turn up to a primary school Christmas play. He only won one of his final 11 league games in that division, which was probably embarrassing. He has since become an enemy in England, as proven by the fact that in the Europa Conference League last week, he was getting booed by the Aston Villa fans. Villa? What did he ever do to them? He's only won one of his first nine games of Ajax 2. So really, this guy has somehow crawled into the England squad off the back of winning a combined two of his last 20 games for Al Etifak and Ajax. That is relegation form. What is this? Luton Town, nobody. Yeah, I don't think anybody was really that bothered who Luton did or didn't sell last summer. So, next. Man City, Cole Palmer, 9 out of 10. Cole Palmer is sick. And I'm sorry, but he has been a joke. Man City sold him to Chelsea for £40 million. He's got 16 goals and 12 assists for a dreadfully average Chelsea. I know they're different positions, but this is a bit like when Deli Ali's numbers exploded under Poch. I think everyone was a bit surprised to see Man City sell him. But right now, I genuinely think this might just be one of the worst transfer decisions decisions the Guardiola has ever made in his career. Hammer, he really is more deadly and dangerous than Grealish has ever been.
ever. Man United, Anthony Alanga, 6 out of 10. I don't think anybody was too angry to see Manchester United sell anyone last summer. I suppose the only departure that raised right a few eyebrows was maybe selling their Swedish winger, Anthony Alanga, to Nottingham Forest for £15 million. Pounds. I mean, he's been all right. Not that good. Very fast, very pacey and direct. And his end product has been... Okay, five goals and seven assists for a relegation threat and team. Yeah, he's been fine, but nothing that any Manchester United fan would miss. Newcastle, Alisson Maximin, six out of ten. Whatever about anyone else, I, me, thought that Newcastle selling Alisson Maximin to Al Ali for 35 million pounds was stupid. Because I maintain, this French winger is one of the most dangerous one-on-one -on -one dribblers in the world. This is a guy who deserved to play Champions League football for Newcastle. Well, listen, his numbers... I've been okay in the Saudi Pro League. Four goals and nine assists. I mean, he did have one spectacular game where he produced a hat-trick of assists in a 3 0 win at Al Faya. But who cares? There's less than 6,000 people in the ground. And he was up against defenders who would probably struggle in Sunday League. So yeah, Maxi has been, by the looks of things, Average. Probably just eating too many burgers in his car. Nottingham Forest, Brennan Johnson, 6 out of 10. Look, Nottingham Forest were given close to 50 million pounds. Buy Spurs for the homegrown winger Brennan Johnson last summer. I don't think anybody can really blame them for taking that cash. Anyway, he's been okay. Four goals and six assists. He's looked useful and lively for Pasta Coglu on either wing. He's like a modern day Aaron Lennon. No, his numbers are never going to look nuts at the end of the season, but his pace will always be a problem. Sheffield United, Elimin and DA, 4 out of 10. Remember when Sheffield United sold their French talisman, attacking midfielder Ilian Ndia, to Marseille last summer for 20 million pounds and everybody lost their nuts to be fair that was the same club he'd already been with as a child and then his dad moved to England for work and so he had to instead join Borham Wood going from Marseille to Borham Wood the poor child well that selling him was undeniably stupid but he's also been labeled a disaster in France the French press are on his back after just four goals in 34 games he's been massively outshone by a supposedly past at Aubameyang yeah it's been pretty grim Tottenham Hurricane 9 for 5 out of 10 I don't care that Bayern Munich might be about to bottle the Bundesliga title 37 goals and 12 assists in 35 games that is Ballon d'Or worthy levels of form next West Ham Declan Rice 8.5 out of 10 again I don't I don't think anybody could possibly blame West Ham for accepting over 100 million pounds from Arsenal for Declan Rice. Well, he has reluctantly been a huge upgrade of Granite Jack in the middle of the park. He's been very, very good. Wolves, Mateus Nunes, 4 to 10. Which one? Wolves sold so many crucial first teamers last summer. It's hard to narrow down which one was the stupidest loss. I think considering they'd already sold Ruben Evans to Adelan the previous month, then selling fellow Portuguese midfielder Mateus Nunes to Man City for 45 million pounds. Just one year into a five year contract, it looked Dumb. Ah, uh, he's been nothing special that Diddy had. Just a direct replacement for Calvin Phillips on the bench. The guy's got five assists and more red cards than goals, so it's all a bit pointless and a waste of talent. Anyway, that's the interview level. What do you think? What was the stupidest loss that you made last summer? And how are they getting on? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like share as always. I'll talk to you in a while.